This is the Core TV Podcast with your hosts, Joe Valentine and Sebastian Castellanos. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to the Deep Dive. Ready for something uh, unsettling? Today's exploration. Well, let's just say it might leave you sleeping with the lights on. We're taking your request for a deep dive into Dark Souls, specifically. An article from Gore TV, they called it a nightmare wrapped in a world of ancient curses, grotesque monstrosities, and brutal landscapes. And you know, Gore TV, they don't scare easily. Not at all. They've seen it all when it comes to horror. But even they were creeped out by Dark Souls. Oh, yeah. And before we even get to the gameplay itself, Gore TV really focuses on the atmosphere, saying it's what makes it a truly disturbing experience. So let's unpack that. What is it about this world, Dordrenne, that makes it so unsettling, even to seasoned horror fans? Well, first, imagine a world in perpetual twilight, a place where the sun seems to have given up long ago, crumbling ruins as far as the eye can see, and every stone whispers a story of, well, a grandeur that's long gone buried under decay. Gore TV actually calls out specific places like uh, the Undead Berg and the New Lunda Ruins. And they really paint this vivid picture of desolation, crumbling archways, streets just choked with rubble, and this ever-present sense of lurking danger. Right. It's important to remember environments in games, they aren't just backdrops. They have this power to get under your skin, affect you psychologically. And in Dark Souls, this whole ravaged world vibe it's not just visual storytelling it seeps into you yeah yeah i get that every step through the undead burg with those cramped alleys and decaying buildings it just reinforces this feeling of claustrophobia of being trapped like something went terribly wrong here totally and it's not just what you see right it's Mm. imagine yourself there yeah for a moment the silence broken only by the wind whistling through those ruins and let's just say you get the feeling you aren't alone yeah. And not in a good way. Exactly. The sound design. Oh, it's masterful. Dark Souls uses sound to build tension constantly. There are these unsettling noises just when you least expect them, keeping you on edge, wondering what's lurking around the corner. I love that. Gore TV described it as a constant sense of wrongness that gets under your skin. Yeah. Which is so true. Like the world itself is diseased almost, infected with some ancient evil. Right. And that's before we even talk about the undead curse, which in Gore TV's view is really the source of the real horror in Dark Souls. Ooh, okay. This is where things get interesting. And by interesting, I mean existentially terrifying. Mm -hmm. So tell me more about this curse. How does it actually work in the game world? How does it impact the player? Tell me everything. So the undead curse, right. It's not just some story element. It's woven into the very fabric of Dark Souls. How you play, how it makes you feel. It's everything. Okay, so for those who haven't braved this world yet, how does this curse actually work? Well, death and Lord Ran. It's not exactly the end. You die. You get resurrected at a bonfire. Kind of a checkpoint. But here's the catch every death. It takes a piece of your humanity, literally, like chips it away. You're kidding. Nope. And the less human you are, the more susceptible you become to the curse's influence, until eventually, you become one of the hollows. And the hollows, from what I've seen, there's something else. Gore TV called them not just enemies, but walking or shambling cautionary tales. What they mean by that? Remember that wrongness we were talking about before? The hollows, they're it personified. They were human once, just like you, with hopes, maybe even dreams. They had a purpose in this world, probably. But now they're empty shells yeah. driven by this basic instinct to attack anything that moves. Man, so you're not just fighting enemies. You're fighting what you could become. Gore TV actually connected that to real world anxieties, right? Yeah. That fear of losing yourself, your purpose, your identity, yeah. even your sanity. Exactly. It's like the undead curse itself is this metaphor for decline, for losing the essence of what makes you you. And every death, it just brings you closer to that edge, closer to becoming one of those husks, just wandering a ruined world. Really makes you think twice about going hollow. No kidding. Yeah. It's like the game is messing with your head on purpose. And as if the fear of becoming a hollow wasn't enough, you've got to deal with these creatures. Gore TV called them a monstrous gallery, which honestly might be an understatement. What were some of the designs that really stood out to you? Oh, man. It's important to remember the creature design in Dark Souls. It's not just about being shocking or gross. It's symbolic. Each monster, it's like a twisted reflection of the world, of ourselves even which makes them even more disturbing. Okay, I'm intrigued. 
Give me an example. How about the gaping dragon? That thing is massive, grotesque, has a mouth that seems to take up its entire body. What's the deeper meaning there? For me, the gaping dragon, pure consumption, huh. just this creature defined by its hunger, devouring everything in sight, and that ties directly into the whole decay and ruin thing that permeates Lordran, you know? Right. Like the world itself is being consumed by something dark and insatiable. Yeah. And then there are the bell gargoyles perched on that crumbling church, once majestic, now twisted and corrupted. Yeah, Gore TV saw those as like fallen grace. <laughs> the insidious nature of the curse, you know? <laughs> because they were protectors once, symbols of faith. And now, just another threat for the player to overcome. If something once holy can fall to this corruption, what hope do you have? Like talk about a gut punch. Yeah. And that sense of despair, it just gets amplified when you get to the bosses in Dark Souls. Mm -hmm. And I don't just mean they're tough enemies. Gore TV called them psychological trials, which is yeah. accurate. Oh, totally. They said each boss encounter, it's designed to force this confrontation, not just with your skills, but with the game's themes. Despair, decay, the fragility of hope. All of it. And Gore TV focused on three bosses in particular, mm. starting with Artorias the Abyss Walker, this noble knight, right? Mm. But he falls victim to the very darkness he swore to fight. Mm. Tragic. Why does he resonate with so many players, do you think? Because he embodies that fear, right? That even the strongest, the most righteous can still fall. Artorias is a cautionary tale, a reminder that even the most valiant efforts can end badly. Right. It's that whole fear of falling from grace, losing yourself to something you don't understand, and that makes him terrifying. Mm. Okay, who's next on the nightmare list? Ornstein and Smo. Brutal. Oh, I know them. A real dynamic duo. They're fascinating, really. You got Ornstein fast, powerful, the dragon slayer. He represents ambition, pursuit of power. Then there's Smo, the executioner, brute force, blind loyalty. Together, corrupted system. A perversion of order and justice. It's almost like a commentary on how power, even with good intentions, can go wrong. And finally, there's Nido, first of the dead. Death itself, shrouded in darkness, surrounded by bones. Less of a character, more like a force of nature. A reminder that nobody escapes the end. And Nido's design, it actually connects to what Gore TV called the most terrifying element of Dark Souls, the abyss. Ah, yes. The abyss, not really a place, more like an absence, where meaning dissolves and despair rules. A void where everything just dissolves. Yay. That's uh, that's a terrifying thought. So for those of us who haven't quite reached the depths of despair that is Dark Souls, how does this abyss actually show up in the game? Is it a place you go to? Or is it more of like an idea? It's both, kinda. I mean, there are places in the game that are, you know, connected to the abyss, dark, unsettling areas. You almost feel like reality itself is like unraveling around you. I can only imagine. But yeah, more than that, the abyss is this concept, right? This existential dread that goes beyond anything you see on the screen. Gore TV called it Dark Souls' most terrifying concept, a space that defies existence itself. Man, that's deep. How does that mess with players, psychologically speaking? Think about what really scares us, right? At a fundamental level, it's not always the monster in the dark. Sometimes it's the dark itself, the unknown, the unknowable, the abyss. It's that fear, but amplified. Yeah. Like, Times a thousand. The fear of losing everything, not just your stuff mm -hmm. or your life, but like you, mm -hmm. your purpose. So we've talked about the atmosphere, the creatures, those intense boss battles, and now this whole abyss thing. It's a lot. What does Gore TV ultimately say about what makes this game so unsettling, so effective? as horror, especially for someone who might just see it as another action RPG. They made an interesting point. They said Dark Souls works because it doesn't just challenge your skills as a player, right? It challenges your perceptions, yes. your assumptions about what a game can even be. It makes you think, makes you feel, it makes you question the world and your place in it. I get that. It's more than just entertainment. There's a depth there, you yeah. know, a, a willingness to tackle these big themes, despair, resilience, what it means to be human. You don't see that very often in video games. And it does it all without these long cutscenes or like characters explaining everything. It's the environmental storytelling, the creatures, even the way you fight. Every single element of Dark Souls just pulls you into this world and makes you feel its weight. And you know, it's interesting. You mentioned the combat. Even though Dark Souls can be a very solitary experience, yeah. there's also this sense of shared struggle, this community of players who have all faced the same horrors and somehow made it out the other side. It's true. It's almost like the game is telling you, hey, you're not alone in this. Even in this bleak, unforgiving world, just knowing that others have gone through it, there's a weird comfort in that. 
So where does that leave us? What's the takeaway here for our listeners from this deep dive into Dark Souls? What's the aha moment we were hoping for? I think it's this. Horror. It doesn't need jump scares to be effective. Sometimes the most unsettling thing is exploring those darker parts of ourselves. The fears, the anxieties, the stuff we don't like to talk about. Dark Souls forces us to do that. Or maybe just maybe by facing those fears in a game, in this safe space, Maybe it helps us deal with them a little better in the real world. Possibly. Like they say, what doesn't kill you? Makes you stronger. Well, in Dark Souls, it might just make you hollow. But hey, at least you learned something along the way, right? That's what we like to hear. As always, a huge thank you to you, the listeners, for joining us for another deep dive. And until next time, may your journey be filled with light. Or at least a few well-placed dodge rolls. (laughs) 